In the studio right now, we got uh, Lieutenant Ray Mendoza, public information officer with Lubbock Police Department. Welcome to the program. Thanks for rolling on out on Monday. Thank you for having me, Tom. Hey, um, okay. Uh, yesterday, visited with you and and was just kind of asking you what was on the plate, and you said that we had an assault and home invasion on Friday, and what were the details on that? Well, the, we got a call from the neighbor who had found uh, uh, the the victim tied up in his house in his house ransacked, and uh, he had been transported to uh, UMC with with serious injuries. And then uh, over the weekend, he took a turn for the worse, and he passed away on Sunday. Oh wow! Mm, goodness. And so we're still uh, investigating. We're trying to determine if this was uh, maybe a medical condition he had, or if it was related to the actual robbery. Wow. And um, the perp is still out there? Yes. With nobody's been arrested. No, we don't have anybody in custody. Um, d- can you divulge any of the details, like, around, like, the neighborhood or the address of, you know, people might be able to keep their eyes open or maybe recall something? Yeah, it was in the uh, the uh, 2100 block of East 47th Streets where this occurred. Wow. If anybody saw anything, we encourage them to call Crime Line. Seven four one one thousand. That's correct. So the house was burglarized as well. I mean, were things taken? Well, it was it was a robbery. Yeah, they was. they they were in the house. Uh, we were trying to determine how that came about, mm-hmm. and uh, he was tied up, and then uh, he uh, they wound up doing, you know, taking several items from the house and ransacking the house. Okay, mm-hmm. so the okay just to put it out there, the difference between a burglary and a robbery is mm-hmm. a burglary is somebody breaks in nobody's home. That's correct. Right. Robbery is somebody's home and, you know. Yeah, they're actually you, present while you know, this is taking Yeah, and things place. are forcibly taken. Yes. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, you know, then I made the mistake of asking you to keep your eyeball open yesterday afternoon because you never know how things are going to go. And you said, oh, yeah, I get it. And you walk in here and you said, man, uh, your ears must have been burning because very active, very active yesterday. Uh, had a robbery, a homicide, and a hit and run um, all yesterday. Yes. Uh, the first thing we had is just about 1030 last night uh, at the El Patron Bar, East 50th and Southeast Drive. Uh, there was a fight inside the bar that spilled out into the parking lot, and then there were shots fired, and uh, at least one victim uh, has deceased because of the gunshot. So. Wow. Was anybody else shot, or just was that the only person shot? That's the only person that we know of that was injured or, or hit. Okay. Uh, robbery. Yes. Uh, the, the robbery at the oh, 7-Eleven. I have a question about that last one. At the, uh, did, did, was there an arrest made? No, nobody's there? been, nobody's been, uh, been arrested. Uh, detectives were called out, and they, uh, as of this morning, they were still working hmm. very actively on it. Good call on that one, uh, Laura. Just kind of went over the head there. What? I mean, you saying, <laughs> did they arrest anybody? Yeah. Yeah, that's an important detail. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, you said another 7-Eleven robbery? Yes, sir. Uh, the one at 5011, for 5001 University, that happened around 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, suspect comes in, points a handgun at the clerk and demands the money. Uh, the clerk complies and uh, the suspect flees the scene. And nobody's been arrested in that one as well. What hey, was the address? It's 50th and University. Ugh, really? Grief. Yeah. You know, thing is with with stuff like that. I mean, he or she or whoever it was is on videotape. Don't don't people know, I know. that? I know. I know. Exactly. And then, and then they're you know they're going to drive around. You know, they're going to be driving around the town, and mm-hmm. it's just like. But if you are a store clerk, I mean, the clerk did the right thing, right, by just handing over the money. Absolutely. You know, the money can always be replaced. The mm-hmm. person's life cannot. Right. Okay, um, finally visit, uh, I think, 200 block of Guava had a hit and run. What time was that? That's correct. That happened around uh, 1230 last night. Um, uh, Mr. Clifford Hayes, 72-year-old male, was walking in the street, and uh, we're still trying to get more information, but he was struck by a vehicle and then left there. He would, mm. Nobody stopped to render aid until he was found. Wow. And his, is he deceased? No, he, he sustained uh, life-threatening injuries, though. Okay. He was transported to UMC. So he's in the hospital today? The, yes, Laura. Oh, bless his heart. Wow. 72 <clears throat> years old. What is with people not stopping and, and helping someone? I'll never understand it. Uh, okay. Uh, well, unless they were under the influence of something. Yes. Not making good choices. You know, I mean, now, 
I know your job's heavy duty because you're always, most of the time, the bearer of bad news. But in this particular instance, you have a word of good news because you guys are involved with the Helping Heroes program. Yeah. Tell us yes, about that. Yes, yes. Um, well, they've recently started some of our uh, officers from different agencies got together and decided that we needed to do more to help uh, some of our injured officers. Um, more specifically, we have uh, on the LPD is uh, Officer Jacob Flores. He was injured in the line of duty while he was trying to apprehend a, a suspect from an Amber Alert out of Austin. And uh, he received uh, injuries that are going to prevent him from continuing in the profession. And so we're trying to help him out, uh, raise some money. It's going to cause a lot of burden on his you know, financial status. And so also uh, recently, Corey Owens, he was struck by a drunk driver while he was directing traffic. And uh, he had to have his foot amputated. And we're mm. still wow. unclear on the status of, of his return. And so we're just going to try to help them. You know, they take a big hit financially when these things happen. Uh, yes, they, they get workman's comp and so forth, but a lot of these officers, including myself, you know, we work extra duty jobs, you know, have uh, off-duty jobs mm -hmm. and works overtime shifts. Um, in this case also, you know, their their families have to take time off to care for them. And, and so they take a big hit. And so we're going to try to help them out, try to get them through this. Yeah, the emotion, <clears throat> just the emotional strain of that. I mean, you know, people right. just... And financially, they only they're they're only receiving like half of the pay that they had. Well, in the case of uh, if they get uh, if they end up having to medically retire or something like that, yes, they don't that significantly reduces their income, mm -hmm. and so they'll have to find something else to do to to you know to support their families. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. Hey, man. Well, thanks for sharing. I mean, you know. It, so you how know. how can people help with this fund? Well, we're going to have a, an event, uh, helping heroes. Uh, on Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Indiana Avenue Baptist Church up there at 98th in Indiana. Oh, I we're saw have, the sign out for that. Yes, yeah. we're going to have lots of events for the children. Uh, there's going to be a lot of v food vendors, and all you have to really do is, is donate some money. You get to eat. You get to, you know, let your kids play, uh, face painting. Uh, we're going to have all our uh, SWAT equipment out there that kids can play on and, and check out. So it, it's going to be a good event that we encourage everybody to come out and support. Well, no, good. no live ammo with the SWAT stuff, though. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man. Uh, what are the what are the hours on that? Ninety eighth and ninety uh, eighth and Indiana at Indiana Avenue Baptist. That's correct, and it'll be from ten a.m. to five p.m. This we're also, Saturday. We're also going to have a uh, an event for you to to donate blood as well, and uh, it's all in conjunction with the Battle of the Badges, where we're battling with the fire department to see who can get the most uh, blood donated to their food, their blood bank. Oh, okay. Great. So. Hey, man, thanks for coming in. Raymond Doza, LPD's public information officer. Appreciate it. Thank you.